AMD is adding a feature to their GPUs that I think everybody should get excited for. Cooler Master enters into the streaming game with a stream engine, and we have our first look at what Intel's GPU looks like. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Jeffrey Bezos. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna be starting off by the hottest news, which is there's a new patch out there for AMD GPUs, indicating that next-gen display outs could be display port 2.0 which i know before you get all droll and like not excited about display out let's just talk about display port 2.0 specs for a second number one it is almost twice the bandwidth of the current hdmi 2.1 spec which runs at 48 gigabits per second display port 2.0 could run at nearly 80 gigabits per second or 20 gigabits per second per lane which is extremely fast enough to handle a 10k display at 60 hertz or alternatively, which is what I'm excited for, two 4K displays at 144 hertz. That's gonna be great for everybody who's upgrading to these next-gen monitors, especially if this gets implemented in, in AMD's next-gen RDNA 3 cards. The 6900 XT can handle 4K 144 hertz. I can't imagine what the next-gen, especially with rumors indicating that it's supposed to be over double of what we currently have. It should be able to support two 4K 144 hertz displays. No problem, I'm looking forward to it so much. Also there's indication that DSC or display stream compression could be added on to get it to support even more than 10K 60 hertz, maybe 10K 120, all right? My 8K TV upstairs from LG is now obsolete, even though I still have no content to actually play on it. Which if I could take a second to just brant at everybody for a second, this is one of the conversations that happens when it comes to like standards being implemented of like, why do we need PCI Express 5.0? We're not even saturating 3.0 yet. Why do we need a new display standard? Nobody's using a Okay, because if you have standards that are beyond what your current specifications are, that means you can grow into them. And especially in the argument of like PCI Express 5.0, you want PCI Express 5.0 because then that means your PCI Express 3.0 lanes are fewer, which means that you can use more devices, especially when you're trying to like add in NVMe SSDs, you can use more than just one NVMe 4.0 drive with one PCI Express 4.0 graphics card. You could have multiple because PCI Express 5.0 is double the bandwidth, which means that you're using half the lanes, which means you could get potentially up to double the support. It's a good thing to have standards and that you're not saturating. That's a good thing. You don't want standards that you're saturating because that means that the standards are lagging behind. Brant over. What do you think of DisplayPort 2.0? Let me know in those comments. And I'll let you know about today's episode sponsor, ButcherBox, my friends. This, I, I have a sad tale to tell you. In case you watched the video that we released on UFD Tech about how my power went out for quite some time. Well, with that power outage, it went on long enough that all of the food in our freezer went bad, it leaked out, and there's butcher box juices everywhere, which is a bad thing when you don't keep your meat frozen. But thankfully, today's episode sponsor, Butcher Box, delivers meat to you, to your door, completely frozen and prepackaged in the way that you want it. You could either pick from one of their pre-made boxes or you can customize your own to meet your family's meat needs. Meet your meat needs. This is how me and my family get our meat instead of buying it at the grocery store because we get 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised, crate-free, and wild-caught seafood, and it's remarkably affordable coming in at under $6 per meal with shipping being free. Butcher Box is committed to partnering with with the correct farmers. And if you sign up using our link in the video description, just try out ButcherBox. You'll get six burgers, eight hot dogs, and up to three pounds of chicken breast for free in your first box. That's enough for a barbecue, my friends, or as they call it in South Africa, a braai, all right? Six burgers, eight hot dogs, and up to three pounds of chicken breast in your first box with ButcherBox by using our link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. And while it might take a lot of power to heat up that barbecue that you're gonna be going, AMD doesn't want you to take up a a lot of barbecue power power draw to run YouTube at 4K, especially 4K 60 with their latest driver release. It's reducing power consumption in that very specific use case. How many YouTubers are really releasing in 4K 60 in the first place? And then number two, I, I mean, it's it's some pretty decent number changes. The 6700 XT is dropping from 30 watts to 18 watts, which is almost half. The 6900 XT is dropping from 42 watts to 30, and the 6800 XT is dropping from 40 
to around 32 watts, which is good because less power consumption means that you can have more power to mine with, I think. I don't know. I'm sure it'll save you like six cents a year and save the environment, all right? And Mist is coming to save your Xbox. You wanna play 4K 60 on the brand new Mist? Well, they're implementing AMD's FSR technology and they're gonna have it available from launch, which I believe this is the first confirmed Xbox game to have AMD's FSR. We've already got the PlayStation 5 one that's rolled out, whereas Xbox is now getting this on August 6th. Free for Game Pass users, FSR being implemented, 4K 60. Non honestly, not a bad deal. And I don't know if this is gonna be a bad deal, but it's actually a pretty ingenious piece of hardware. Cooler Master announcing their all-in-one live streamer setup, the Stream Engine, spelled with a J, because of course it is. Anyways, I do think this is pretty neat. It's not something like a Stream Deck knockoff. It's actually combining a couple of devices in one. So it, th that's kind of the point of an all-in-one integration. There's an integrated iPad app. It also has an iPad dock in case you're trying to do like some sort of mobile streaming. And you can see it has buttons for you to be able to easily switch between scenes or potentially even trigger some sort of sound effects in case you want to do that with some good knobs and dials with easy controls on what looks to be. Hopefully those are customizable LED screens so that you could actually put whatever you want. Hopefully like the Stream Deck, but they don't indicate that on their website currently. But it also has a whole bunch of inputs. You can see here they have several HDMI inputs. There's USB, stereo out, as well as mic in, a USB link, and then also monitoring ports for your source and program, as well as a loop out for HDMI 1. You can see the specifications here where it supports one 4K HDMI and two 1080p HDMIs with two HDMIs out and a gigabit LAN port. So this is honestly a pretty decent piece of hardware. It seems like it's almost like the Blackmagic ATEM Mini mixed sort of with like a Stream Deck. It's kind of a neat piece of hardware. It's supposed to be coming out later this month with no price yet announced. I'm intrigued on this thing, especially for the charity live stream event that we are coming up on for raising money for my son's rare disease organization, Syngap Research Fund. We're trying to raise money for the cure. And this could actually, this could actually fit in to that entire setup, which you know what fits into this setup here at Hot News? Crypto stonks, that's right. Let's talk about Bitcoin. The whole crypto market just, it's, since I sat down to film has kind of just decided that's gonna poo all over its bed. Bitcoin down 3% in the last 24 hours to $44,000, just below 45,000, which obviously that's not crapping the bed if you compare it to just about a month ago where it was, you know, in the 30,000s. Ethereum down to just above $3,000, $3,017.79, down 5% on the day. Dogecoin down 10% to be at 29 cents. GameStop also being slightly down 0.23%, down to 163.55 at close. AMC, however, ending slightly up 4.12% to close at 37 16 crypto stocks over. And what is over is compatibility in CPU cooler for Intel's LGA 1200-1150. You are used to just being able to slot the same cooler thing. That's not happening anymore. But now companies are confirming that they're going to offer upgrade kits to LGA 1700, which is going to be Intel's Alder Lake mounting hardware. Noctua being one of the first to confirm that they're going to have free of charge mounting upgrades, which they've been doing since AIM2 sockets in 2006. So kudos to Noctua for introducing this to the consumer. But you won't have to worry about this for AIM AMD's next gen, because even though the AIM5 socket's gonna be switching over to LGA, which has the pins on the motherboard as opposed to on the CPU, they look to be, at least according to now some new spec sheets that are coming out, it's gonna have the same mounting hardware for it, so you don't need to necessarily go out and try to get Noctua to give you a free upgrade, okay? You get no freebies for AMD. You're stuck using the same old, same old, which is kind of what Google announced with the Pixel 5a yesterday. Their latest mid-tier smartphone coming in at a price point of 449. It's got a few few new features that the 4A or 4A XL did not have, such as having IP67 dust and water resistance, as well as having a new Snapdragon processor. It's got a lot of the features that you would expect in a mid-range phone at this point. The only downside is, is likely the fact that it's over six inches in screen size and only has a 60 hertz display as opposed to 90 or 120. The reviews that I've seen on this smartphone seem to indicate that it's, it's a decent mid-range upgrade. It is a bit pricey at 450, so hopefully Google's gonna keep the 4A around at 349 because then that still would be a pretty decent buy. But what do you think of the Pixel 5A? Let me know down in the comments. And Google wants your feedback on Google Stadia because they want you to try it, all right? They're trying their new marketing strategy to get you involved on Stadia. And that is, if you have YouTube Premium, they're gonna give you three 
That's, that's not one. That's not two. That's three free months of Stadia Pro. Okay, this is limited to new Stadia Pro subscribers, so not me, unfortunately. I was rushing over as soon as I heard this deal. I'm on YouTube Premium. I was going, I just like, my mind exploded. And I was like, yes, yes, Stadia. Ho, ho, ho. And now I, I can't because I'm not new. I was, I was a previous Stadia. I paid them for a whole year. <sighs> Go get your Stadia Pro if you have YouTube Premium. And you need to go get yourself a panic room, my friends, because Boston Dynamics put out a new video about their Atlas robots, which just can jump everywhere, okay? They can get to you no matter where you're hiding, all right? They're gonna put a knife in their hand, stabby stab you, the Atlas robots flipping, dipping all over the place, doing jumpies on sides, and look at this. Oh my freaking goodness, it is crazy. It's doing a jump over. If you go to later in the video, they do dual backflips. It's crazy, this is absurd. This is the next gen future that we're currently living in. Check this out. Twisting around, hoppity dopping in, and then back flipping, all right? That's how they're gonna kill you with style. That's exactly how this future is going. I do wanna call out for a second though, this video, like I, I'm not gonna second guess the fact that their robots can do this because Boston Dynamics is a leader in all of this, you know, robot parkour, I guess is the genre that we're calling it. But something about the camera work makes this feel like CGI. I actually don't fully believe that this is real. Something just feels off to the filming, maybe the lighting or the motion of the robot is just tripping me up and I, I don't know, the video looks fake. I, I, that's that's all I'm gonna say, but I'm not gonna discount the fact that they probably have robots that can do that. And you shouldn't discount Intel with their upcoming GPUs. We talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that Intel is now bringing out their Arc GPU. Alchemist is coming out, and they gave us a teaser of what it's gonna look like by using a thousand drones in the nighttime sky to show you that they are going with a rectangular box set up with uh, two fans, all right? They're not thinking outside the box, they're just going with what works. It's I mean, it, it's fine. You can kind of see it's right there. This goes along with the GPU design that was leaked back in March, including the number of fan blades that are actually on it. If you count in the drone shot, it's nine. And then in this picture right here, it's also nine. So this likely seems to be the look that Intel's going for, just black, boring not really calling any attention w remains to be seen. I haven't really heard any indication of whether or not Intel is going to have AIB partners for their GPUs. Are we gonna get Asus, MSI, Gigabyte in on producing these GPUs and coming up with their own custom coolers or are you gonna have to buy them from Intel directly? That remains to be seen, but that's your first look at Intel's GPU. And that's the last look I'm gonna give you during breakfast of hot news, okay? You're gonna have to wait till breakfast tomorrow to get more, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. You can go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we covered Intel's Arc GPU in a bit more detail. And that's my turtle falling down, which means it's time to go. See you tomorrow.